quest to finish that quest. Surprising how much is still undiscovered. Camp Nowhere. Latopolis. The base. Yay! All right. Use frost arrows or frost bombs to put machines into the brittle state. This makes them much more susceptible to incoming damage from other ammo types. Shock is represented by this icon. It builds up to the shocked state. Enemies in the shocked state are stunned for a short period of time. Ideal for targeting hard to hit components. Plasma is represented by this icon. The plasma blast state decays into a time delayed explosion on the target. Deal more damage before the end for a stronger explosion. Why do they always... I said I wanted to go into the base. Why do they always spawn me here? And not up there where the fireplace is. It feels a bit as if that's... You know, if the ledge is... Oh, right, on this side we don't have a fireplace. Okay. I guess we need right, that fire. Melting on my clothes. Great. Okay, this will be interesting. Culture shock for everyone. So, we're fighting immortals from the stars now. Looks like it. What's next? Wizards from the moon? There she is. Heard you had an interesting time at Thebes. Maniacs, lava, what's not to like? I'll remember that next time I go traveling. At least I got what we needed to trap Hephaestus. Good thing I got my gear ready then. Have you spoken with Alva yet? Yeah, when she's not reading the archives like a giddy kid drinking her first ale. Uh, she took to that new focus quick, that's for sure. I gotta say, I'm a little jealous. But I can see why you two hit it off. You look tired. Ha! You never want to hold back, are you? I've just been making sure that I got everything down for this mission of yours. I wouldn't want to be the usual screw-up out there. You'll do fine, Errand. I should get going. As soon as you want us heading out to those cauldrons... I'll give you the heads up. From the look on your face, I'd say the mission was a success. I got Omega Clarence. Is everyone ready to head out to Cauldron Gemini? As soon as you give the word. Did Alva make it here all right? Our new Quen friend. <laughs> the moment she laid eyes on the archives, she jumped on them like a long leg. Sounds about right. Once Gaia is back up and running, I expect you to put all your training to good use. The seeds have been planted. All they need is a chance to bloom. What? I thought that was pretty good. Zoe liked it. <laughs> I'm glad you and Zoe found each other. Don't forget, you're to blame for that. 
<laughs> yeah, she got beaten up by the Zenith. Now that I have Omega clearance, we can grab Hephaestus and finally have the advantage over the Zeniths. Can't wait to see their faces as they stare down a bunch of charging thunder jaws. Better them than us, for once. <sighs> I don't know. They've been saying it so much. Yeah, we're gonna build a robot army and then we're gonna take the Zeniths down. And Gaia has been a little reserved. She s basically said something like, I oh... I get this to Gaia. Of course. Let us know when we're needed. You know, um... It was a lot of, um... I... I think this might be the only solution if I have to, or something like that. So... I don't know, I'm kind of expecting oh, that to be Forget it. their small attempt at a plot twist. That we go there, think we can build the machine army, and then for some reason we can't. Try to be optimistic. Try to be realistic. We're terrible. Welcome back. Good to be back. Have you met our new Quen guest yet? I could barely keep up as she gave herself a tour of the base. Varro gave her a new focus. Though when he told her she was free to access all the data we had here, she turned so pale I, I thought she'd faint on the spot. We showed her to the archive room so she could see for herself. She hasn't left the place since. Sounds like Alva. How are things with everyone? Slightly quieter. Aaron's been busy scouring data on his newest obsession. Apparently the old ones wrestled machines as some kind of performance. Called it Metal versus Meat. A must-see battle between steel and flesh, as Aaron likes to put it. You'd think we have enough of that going around as it is. Metal versus flesh. I don't get that reference. Is that like... Is it about metal music, or did they actually... Did... is that actually like a unique aspect to this universe, that they actually built... robots people fought? Read anything interesting lately? I found out the old ones use leaf infusions, like the Utaru do. Tea, they call it. Apparently it helped soothe them. That and some sort of scented wax they used to cleanse their aura. Uh, plus something called bubble baths. Me, I think I'll stick to singing to calm the nerves. <laughs> you go like, no, no, shh, shh, no. You, you won't believe, but, but this will be cool. Uh, you should try it. How to go with the chorus after we fix the land gods. They were shocked when I told them that our lands would soon be on the mend. I thought Fane's eyes would, but of course they had, even if it meant all their, to be okay, honest. We've I'm glad. They're lucky. Heard that one. I don't know why it's still there and why it's still manage, uh, marked as quest specific. I need to get going. Right. You've retrieved the Omega clearance. That means we'll be going after Hephaestus soon. I'll make sure my gear's ready. This sounds suspiciously like uh, like this will be the final battle. Okay, now let's talk to Alva. Aloy! Right to work, I see. There's just so much. I mean, we knew of artificial beings that served the ancestors, but Gaia? Oh, she's amazing! And you, a true reincarnation of an ancestor. Genetically speaking, of course, not like the um, late CEO. And there's more ancestors out there, returned from beyond the stars. Of course, they're trying to kill us, which is not great. And Eric Visser is with them, which is disturbing. 
and then there's Hephaestus, and... Okay, okay. How about we take it one step at a time? You're right. I also owe you an explanation for everything that happened at Landfall. I imagine you don't know anyone here that well yet, but they're a good group. It's funny because one of your friends is, well, another you. Not that you are the same person at all. I mean, you are, as in you're both genetically Elizabeth Sobeck, but even so, you're different. Yeah, we are. I hope everyone's been treating you okay. Oh, yeah, of course. They've all been extremely welcoming. And they share the knowledge they learn on their focuses with each other freely. It's refreshing. Back home, diviners can only share data with the permission from the overseers. Sounds restrictive and stifling. Yeah, you are not wrong. I see you've been using your new focus. It's been fascinating. So much better than the version the Quen have. What would have taken me years to sort through, like the database you helped me recover? With this, I've been able to establish search parameters to speed up the process. This could revolutionize how diviners analyze the legacy. That is, whatever part of it the overseers would actually let us study. I wonder what the legacy in that case is. Like... Do they have Apollo? That will be a fun thing, you know, if we in the end, you know, if she hears about, oh yeah, this Apollo thing, what was it really? And then Ayla says, yeah, well, it was kind of the all the knowledge of humanity collected. And then I went like, hey, that sounds like our legacy. Um, you want data, you'll find lots of it here. A diviner has never had this sort of unsupervised access to archives such as this. And knowing you, I suspect there is much that would normally be forbidden held within them. But I was sent here to help you. I would be remiss to ignore any truth laid before me. Maybe it'll help the Quen find their way back to the path of truth. Yeah, it, it feels like the Quen are a lot about um, controlling access to information and using what little information is given out to control the populace. Even if you accept that uh, the CEO was really a uh, uh, an exceptional case who misbehaved, you know he still, I guess he still had the ear of the emperor. And um, what we've now learned from her, of course, she said, you know that. The CEO is not like Aloy. So I guess the CEO really just was a descendant that, uh, you know, looked a lot like a younger pharaoh or something. And uh, that in turn means, you know, he didn't have... Uh, that explains why he didn't have access because he wasn't genetically identical. He was just, you know, quite similar. You mentioned Eric Visser? How do you know about him? The Zenith who tried to kill you? He is known to the Quen as the Protector. Combing through data related to his work led us to breakthroughs related to weapons and military tactics. Knowledge our rulers use to conquer and expand. To become the empire we are today. That's why he's one of our most revered ancestors. 
But based on your encounter with him, it appears he's even more ruthless than we ever imagined. Yet another distorted interpretation in the legacy. Well, at least you're piecing together the truth. If only the overseers back home would do the same. Beta mentioned other Zenas. Tilda, Verbena, and Gerard. I'm afraid I don't know anything about them. Whatever legacy they left behind, the Diviners haven't recovered. Aww. I was just getting my hopes up. Maybe this is the spot where they tell us, you know, either whether Tilda is trustworthy or not. That That's kind of the most pressing question we still have. Or, you know, something in that direction, at least. Back at the greenhouse, you spoke of knowledge forbidden to your people. Diviners are meant to seek out the truth in the legacy. And many Imperials sponsor them in the hopes they'll find something the Empire can put to use, thus gaining favor with the Emperor. But the Board of Overseers claims certain truths are detrimental to the stability of the Empire. Like discovering one of our revered ancestors ended the world. That is why Diviners are only allowed to access segments of the Legacy. Only Overseers can view it all. It ensures that any heretical data can be contained and retrieved before it can spread. What happens to Diviners who break the rules? I never had the courage to ask. They get promoted to Overseers. Badum tss. You said you owed me an explanation for what happened in Thebes. I'm listening. Right. I'll start at the beginning, with the CEO. He was an Imperial, the Emperor's nephew, in fact. As such, he sponsored many Diviners to search the Legacy for anything that might help the tribe, and himself. He took a special interest in anything related to Ted Farrow, whom we consider the greatest of the ancestors. Ted Farrow, revered ancestor. That's tough to take. I know better now, of course. Anyway, the Diviners discovered that Pharaoh spent a great deal of time in San Francisco. In fact, many of the most important ancestors did. So the Emperor's nephew convinced him that an expedition across the ocean might solve our most pressing problems. If only we could find the right data in this fabled city. Perhaps we could roll back the floods and storms that threatened our people. The Emperor declared that all the tribe's resources be poured into this endeavor, Dozens of ships were built, scouting missions were dispatched, and the Emperor's nephew was named Sio, one who wields the legacy for the good of the Empire, the living embodiment of Ted Pharaoh, the Renewer. It may seem strange now, but for a time, he carried all of our hopes. We really believed he would save us. We had no idea just how perilous the journey would be. All right. So he wasn't even a descendant of Ted Farrow. He was just basically declared an honorary Ted Farrow. You said the expedition across the sea was more dangerous than you thought it would be. What happened? We lost most of our ships to hurricanes, and scores of soldiers perished to hunger and disease. And that was before we even hit the coast. Once we landed, machines ripped our patrols apart, and we struggled to replenish our rations. There were bright spots, to be sure. We found Thebes and the greenhouse, but... Nothing improved the CEO's mood as his dreams of saving the tribe were slowly dashed. He became more and more obsessed with Thebes and what lay behind its door. And more and more convinced that the title of CEO was no mere honorific. You heard him, spouting nonsense about Pharaoh's essence and some kind of becoming. We knew these weren't the words of a sane man, but he was quick to put any who spoke out in front of a firing squad. What a great guy. 
The Quen are wrong about many things when it comes to the legacy. I can see that now. But what the CO became was a complete perversion of what principal diviners stand for. The pursuit of truth. Uh, I'm sorry you had to endure his madness. I'm just glad it's over. For everyone. That's... this is, uh... Heavy-handed writing. Like, not not the dialogue or anything, that's fine. Um, but the thing that we come there, we only ever get to hear the CEO's version of events. And then we go with him inside there. And only afterwards we find out, okay, he was... You know, like, they give us, they give him a modern haircut, things like that, and uh, make him look a lot more, you know, current, uh, uh, or, you know, ma make him look so we think he is a descendant of someone. And they make him have this madness that he thinks he is descended from from the gods, you know, like he, you can tell he's kind of trying to, uh, to justify himself as a god king, like, like it was tradition. And they use all that to trick us into thinking, oh, he's related to someone. And, um, yeah, you know, that's not, like, <laughs> you know, it's a bit of, effects writing you know i don't it, it didn't really add that much to the story like you get into speculating but everything you speculated is basically better than the final answer which is that he just had illusions of grandeur which you know we could see that from the moment we met him so it doesn't really give us any new insight or something um So, Bohai, your overseer, will he run things better than Sio? He won't execute people on a whim, if that's what you mean. But he's hardly a paragon of integrity. I can't tell you how many times he took credit for data in the legacy that I uncovered. The best thing I can say about him is that he can be trusted to always do what's best for him. Yep, sounds about right. They're all little Ted Pharaohs, aren't they? The Ancestors. Is that what your people call the Old Ones? Yes and no. The Ancestors are the greatest of the Old Ones. Those whose legacy taught us agriculture, medicine, warfare, leadership, and patronage of the science and arts. The CEO called Elizabeth Sobek an assistant. What's that about? Right. Well... Any old one who has made minor contributions or worked extensively under one of the ancestors is called an assistant. That's how we thought of Sobek, until we met you. Our limited access to data past the late 2040s has obviously uh, misinformed our view of the past. You mentioned the reason you came here was to help your family. Your sister... Her name is Alika. Our parents are commoners. Peasants, really. When I passed the divination exams, they were so proud. It brought honor to our family and increased rations. Only Alika begged me not to leave for the research academy. Why? What happens there? Alika knew that once you enter, you're not allowed to leave or see anyone. Not even your family. Uh, unless you can get special permission and an escort by an overseer. That sounds harsh. Like the focuses we keep, diviners are few in number, and the Empire is, well, fearful that outsiders will try to steal our knowledge. Last time I was allowed to see my family was just before our voyage here. Because of my position, I was able to get them refuge from the floods within the capital. 
But if our crops don't recover soon, they'll starve to death along with everyone else. I promise I'll do my best to make sure it doesn't come to that. I need to get going, but if you need anything... All I need is to help you succeed in your mission. The plan Gaia told me about to capture Hephaestus, it will help set things right? I hope so. Then I will do whatever I can. I promise. I have to say, I like that they introduced us to... Looks like the old ones used their focuses to send all kinds of messages back in the day. All over the world, too. Anytime they wanted. Yeah, I don't know if I'd like that. I wouldn't want my Aunt Alga knowing she could just talk to me every second of the day. My ears would pop off. <laughs> Um, uh, what I like is that, um, they actually, um, implemented, uh, how they actually deal with the Quen. So on one side, they're obviously, um, kind of supposed to be the European faction and, um, I don't know, there something about them reminds me of like traditional dress. It's a bit in the direction like some is uh what are they called? The the Laplanders, I think, have some dresses that kind of are a similar style. And um a bit of it feels Dutch to me. I don't know if that's so just me projecting a of mass destruction or a game. Great. <laughs> um Did she just find World of Warcraft? Um Yeah, so the Sami people, yeah, kind of Something in that area, yeah. Like with the the white and the colorful beads and things like that. I mean, I think that that cent chest centerpiece that, that she has. Dog people. Why not turtle people? Um. But, um, uh, so that chest centerpiece almost looks like a dream catcher, but, uh, you know, it, it does feel kind of in that direction. I mean, they've, for all of the tribal dresses, they've basically truncated the skirts so that, you know, it would be place looks nice with some green in it. practical gear. And dirt. Don't forget all that dirt we had to bring in. If we're going to go around trying to protect life, we should have more of it around. I think it looks nice. What's that? Did someone bring in a metal flower? Okay, but not one we can unpack. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, so, um, you know, given it's a Dutch studio, thank you for the entertainment, Uli, it's time for me to sign off for the night. Okay, have a good night. Bye-bye. Uh, hopefully see you again tomorrow. Um, where was I? Um, yeah. Um... I like that they just that they didn't just go oh yeah um Europe is fine you know um 
but um you know that it wasn't just like our people are the good ones i guess that was probably just you know when you make a game you kind of have several different layers on which something happens and so you just go at this point we need a new faction that can um you know that is a little more progressed and that is slightly a bit more of a challenge but maybe also that will serve as powerful support against the zeniths maybe although it could still be that they go well the protector obviously when we know he's alive we'll side with him which of course wouldn't be that good although i mean if bohai is smart and he seems to be into self-preservation. Then he might realize that uh, he's not he's not going to be uh, you know he's not of interest as a partner for the zeniths. They just want to get rid of all those people. So unless they use him kind of as a wedge to get access to uh, um, to get there's Gwen stuff in here now must be all of us where's the Gwen stuff I guess this common language ever since the expedition landed and we encountered barbarians sorry Tanakh, a question has been gnawing at me given the massive distance between here and the great delta how is it possible that we all speak the same language i mean the legacy tells us that the ancestors had many languages how did it all get reduced to one for questions like these, it's handy to have a friendly superintelligence around. I love Gaia. She's so nice and patient, even when I can't stop talking and bombard her with overlapping queries. And while she can't explain everything I ask her, for this one she had the answer. Apparently the Zero Dawn system was designed to release people into the world as young adults, after being educated via the Apollo database. I sure wish I could have gone to that school. Language instruction was supposed to be a big part of the coursework. Students were to be encouraged to learn many languages, thus keeping alive the wide burnt linguistics of the old world. But when Ted Farrow raised Apollo, he makes me so mad, Zero Dawn reverted to its default language, and that's all the kids in the cradle facilities ever got. So our ancestors, I mean our tribal ones, not the legacy ones, all started with the same speech and never got to learn any more. Mystery solved, yet another rotten, completely unfair thing that shithead, beg my pardon, did to the world. Yeah, that was kind of another thing I I had in my head and forgot again is that uh, why do they speak like it's it's already a stretch that everyone like the Tanakh and the Nora that they all speak the same language ha. over you know like the entire continent especially without you know instantaneous communications but um that uh, that then the people that come from Europe also speak the same language was kind of surprising. But I mean, you know, like, it, if you deal with multiple languages in a game, then you have to make it part of the game. And that makes a lot of things harder because you kind of have to allocate 
time for learning or much about war remains the same or a gadget or or you know give some excuse that your player character might be able to speak with these one people but not with the others and so they overlook it and i mean it's even then it's not realistic because if you look at um for example, in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, they mention that that you um, that the Danish, as the Danes, as they were called, so the Incredible. the Norwegians and, and the Vikings in general, um, were able to mostly speak with the people in England. For the simple reason that, you know, like, they they both were, spoke languages that were descended from Germanic. And so there were similarities, and they mostly, they were speaking different languages, but they kind of were able to communicate. Um, and, I mean, you have the same thing today if, for example, a German goes to the Netherlands. So the ten That's like the next country over um and they're both germanic languages but they're different languages and so you recognize a lot of the vocabulary and there are a lot of similarities in the grammar but the spelling and pronunciation has shifted significantly and so uh just that um you, you know, you would expect something like that to have happened from one coast of the U.S. to the other. I mean, just look at the dialects or the accents, so whatever you want to call them. To take um, I hear there's a bit of a fight over that, like what the different kinds of English spoken in the U.S. are, like Southern or, you know, like Boston or... Silicon Valley, kind of these, the different accents that you hear there. Um, you know, some have, of course, foreign language influences, you know, like there's some French in there in spots and things like that. Um, but others are just, you know, they, they've had a bunch of vowel shifts, some vocabulary um, grew out of use while other vocabulary... Um, that both dialects have kind of um, got, uh, uh, you know, group preferred. And so you have these situations where two people from the U.S. talk with each other and have problem understanding each other because the words are quite different. Um but, you know, today we, we get exposed via television and, and newspapers and whatever to the dialects and the vocabulary from the other coast and things like that. So uh, we're exposed to this, but in Horizon they don't have that. That makes it fascinating. And hi, Featherbrain. Have a good morning, too. How is it going? I hope you're having a good Monday. Yeah, but so, so the whole language situation, I'm glad that they address it. Although it's still a bit of a hand wave, but you know, it's a hand wave we're used to from all science fiction. Like either you have a universal translator like Star Trek, who then very rarely breaks down because the other aliens are just too alien or whatever. Sure. Um, or you just say, well, everyone in the galaxy is descended from the same group of humans that were spread out, and so they speak the same language, which, again, then the language would, would have drifted over the centuries. Aloy, well met. We've been briefed on our mission, and are ready whenever you wish to head to Cauldron Gemini. Have you spoken with Alva? The Quen is peculiar. Nothing like a Tanakh. Her mind is sharp, 
that much is certain. But it's hard to imagine her surviving in the wild. Trust me, she's tougher than she looks. I will take your word for it. How are your studies going? I wanted to learn more about the world of the Old Ones. And? I looked up this pharaoh Gaia said you went looking for, and learned about the plague of machines he unleashed. To think that the ancient world was wiped out by... <sighs> a mistake. A single miscalculation that... There is no glory or honor in such a fate. Only hubris. And pointless death. That about sums it up. I have to go now. Then do not let me keep you. All right. So... I guess this is the point where we now have to continue the main quest. Um, let's have a quick look. I kind of wonder whether this is... Well, I guess if it's the final battle, we will be asked, do you want to do that now? Or do you want to do other things first? Oh, and I mean, this says level 13 now. So we have a bunch of other quests to do. And interestingly, Kotalo's mission is level 30 as well. So I think we should probably see if we can do his quest before we do the final quest. But on the other hand, there is a bunch of... There is still this one mission that is on hold. And those are level 32, so it's... There's a bunch of stuff that's still supposed to come later. So I guess I'll just run out there and do a quick save. You got Zoe's quest yet? Yeah, we we did that last stream. Um, it was pretty cute with the whole singing and stuff. Thought those looked like snow clouds. All right, let's go back in and uh, see what happens if we give Gaia everything. Though I'm. I see politics stay the same no matter how much time passes. Jeez, Varl digging deep into the old platitudes box. experience in Thebes was unsettling, but we have a new problem. Did something go wrong with Beta and the rig? Will we be able to transport you to Gemini? The rig is complete. The problem is Hephaestus itself. It has accelerated its proliferation throughout the Cauldron Network, increasing its power. But with your sub-functions restored, we can still succeed, right? Correct. But the net effect is that absorbing Hephaestus will take longer than previously calculated. How long? Even with Omega clearance, my current estimate is that the merge will take 35 hours. And each hour increases the risk of detection by the Zeniths. Two cores. Two overrides. 
what if the merge were carried out by two clones of Elizabeth Sobek, both armed with Omega clearance? How long then? Half the time? Hephaestus would be unprepared for the simultaneous labor of two operators, in addition to obvious synergetic efficiencies. Calculating. It would reduce the merge time to approximately 4.5 hours. Okay. Varl, it looks like we're gonna need Beta at Gemini. Do you think you can convince her? Uh, I don't know, but I'll try. What about our diversion? Are the pulse generators ready? Only a final test remains. I am confident that if fired in proximity to other cauldrons, the pulses will mask our activities at Gemini from the Zeniths. Good. As long as Aaron can operate one without shooting himself in the face. Aloy, you'd better get down here. Beta's in bad shape. Okay. Okay. I guess we got our retarding moment. Let's see what happens now, what we have to do. So we just made a plan. The question is Beta in bad shape. Does it just mean she's completely lost her motivation? Or, you know, is she kind of a a clone that wasn't really meant to live permanently. Aloy. I tried, but it's impossible. I don't think anything will convince her to go. We don't have a choice. Good luck. Beta, you have to come with us. It's the only way. It's one mission. The most important one. We need you. Tell me why you won't go. What if they... What if they take me back? Alone. In a cell again. A slave. Forever. Okay. The thing is, I'll protect you. It's usually kind of a good thing to say in a situation like this, but their mission will be not being very near to each other. Look at the odds. I mean, Beta is kind of the, the calculating mind. So I'm not sure if... Uh, if that... Um, I mean, you know, the game doesn't really have decisions in that sense. So I think this is more a roleplay opportunity like in the previous game, I think it was. But I think I'll go with, like, find your courage. I think she's not that susceptible to rah-rah, like we've tried that. So really, trying to go scientific and say... Let's try it and see. I'm, I'm hoping that Aloy has prepared, has thought about the odds and has a good argument here. We have a solid plan. You helped come up with it. Without you there, the probability that the Zeniths discover us is high. But with you, that risk is much less. We'll get Hephaestus, get out, and come back here. It'll be okay. No! You can't guarantee that. I told you from the beginning, we'll never beat them. It's hopeless. 
Beta. Leave me alone! You don't understand! You're right. I don't understand. We have the same genes, the same mind, the same heart. So why can't you find the strength to do what has to be done? Like Elizabeth would. Don't you think I thought about that? I don't know what piece of Elizabeth I'm missing. I don't know what you have that I don't. I look through all the data from your focus. You were raised as an outcast, shunned and isolated just like me. So what's the difference? What's my defect? You don't have a defect. Beta, look, it's not a piece of Elizabeth. The difference is, I had him. Frost, he raised you, trained you, but he was never warm or loving. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. He wanted me to embrace the tribe. But then he gave his life for mine. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. What did it feel like? It was like... Having a strength that was always there. It's still there. Even now I hear him in my head when things get bad. When it looks impossible, look deeper. And then fight like you can win. You don't have to go on the mission. We'll find another way. I'll go. Like you said, odds are in our favor if I do. We have to succeed. But you have to promise me one thing. Yes, of course. If it goes bad, if the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? Okay. Promise? I promise. I could use as much time as you can give me to study up on the merge, to make it as efficient as possible. I'll be ready when you are. I swear. Aloy, whenever you are ready, come speak to me and I'll ask the others to make final preparations for the mission. How do you perceive Aloy to be? It's difficult. Um, I don't even remember how I played her the first time round, like in Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, but um, it's um, you know, a Aloy is kind of among the rest of the tribes she's kind of 
more of an intellectual person. So she definitely, um, she's definitely calculating. Um, I think, you know, so that's why these logical choices work. But she's also someone like Elizabeth, um, who kind of loves the world and, um, tries to save the people there over and over again, despite them having been assholes to her so much, you know? So, um, those, uh, more emotional choices also, like all three choices work for her. Um, so my, my reason, um, or my thoughts, um, what she would do here was more like what will, um, Beta react to best. And, you know, I think, like, just, it, I, I think you can do, you know, the story is written so you can do all three choices there. These choices are just role-playing opportunities for you to make Aloy the way you want her to be. And so, um, the, the hard choice was very tempting, but just felt like a lie to me because, uh, if they're really in the two cauldrons, then Aloy is too far away to actually protect her in this case. So, while Aloy will probably do anything she can to save Beta, um, you know, pointing that out, I think it would have taken me out of the story because then Beta would have had to miss that they're so far away from each other. And, uh, yeah, so so that's why I didn't go with the heart choice this time. You usually went for the heart ones. Yeah, it's, uh... I like those, but I'm... I don't remember what I did. Like, because, especially, like, the, the first part, the childhood part, I played several times and tried the different reactions you could have. You know, when when she gets the rock thrown at her. Um, and I think Aloy, at her heart, you know, she is a rebellious, angry person. And she's not very patient. Like, you know, with people that wastes her time, like, she's, she says what she thinks often. So, in this situation, I think, you know, um, but, but, you know, I think in this situation, there's too much riding on it, and Aloy would try to be more patient, and things like that, so it's, uh, very interesting. Notes are 20. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Um, but anyway. So, okay. So, I think... Oh, there is more to talk with our friends. Then, of course, we'll talk with our friends again. Hey, I thought I'd check in before leaving for Gemini. Are you sure we shouldn't be uh, checking up on you? I mean, whatever went on between you and Beta sounded intense. And not that I'm judging. <laughs> Forge knows all the screws flew loose every time Mercer and I fought. I think we'll be fine from now on. I'm glad to hear it. Anybody take you up on that ale you brought yet? Zo can't stand the smell of it. I tried Alva, but I don't think she knows what taking a break means. And I'm not putting Varl anywhere near that stuff after that victory party in Meridian. What about Catalo? Ah, now there's a man that can hold his liquor. Pretty sure we downed half a keg. We had a good chat, I think. <laughs> he probably doesn't remember much. 
Germany now has two cores about 20 meters. Oh, they're only 20 meters apart? Ah, okay. I thought since it said that there was like a... a it seemed like there was like a crack in the floor or something, a big one, and that's why two cores got built. I mean, if they're this close together, then I guess that would have worked. But then... It doesn't really make sense. Like, why did it build two cores? Why why didn't it just connect, reconnect the cores, maybe in a flexible way? Okay, that's weird. I guess now that we know that they're, um, that they're planning to, you know, have both alloys do it, it makes sense that there would be two cores in retrospect, you know? That we can double the speed because both of them can start their overrides. But, um... Um, you know, that's kind of justifying the, you know, changing the world to fit the plot. Which, of course, you know, you can make when you're writing a new story. Um, with new locations and things like that, but, um, yeah. I didn't catch that they were this close together. After we get Hephaestus, we'll be taking the fight to the Zeniths. So, no more reading. Ah, it wasn't that bad. Not really. Besides, uh, going through all that data helped me realize something. You know, the soldiers, the, the ones that fought the Pharaoh machines so Gaia could be built? Uh, they were fighting a battle that couldn't be won. Not with all the weapons in the world. I think most of them realized that, whether anyone said it or not. They still did it, though. They bought time for all the eggheads working to save the future. Our future. As long as I can do that for you, I'll consider myself a success. Thank you, Erend. I'm glad you're with me. Okay, enough. I'm gonna get emotional. <sighs> I hope they're not setting up Erend for, uh, for a heroic death. Because he thinks he's a... It sounds a bit like he has a death wish, you know? Like, oh, I'm a screw-up, and if I can somehow buy enough time before I die for Aloy to pull something off, then I'm not a screw-up, you know? Like, that feels like he's just looking like a way to, uh, for a way to end his life in a heroic way. I should go. That same here. I got a date with a cauldron to prepare for. Okay. Aloy, everything okay with you and Beta? It sounded like you guys had a uh, lively conversation. We just had a lot to talk about. Does this mean she's coming with us to Gemini? It does. I hope you're ready to rein in the most stubborn AI of all time. That's what all this was for, wasn't it? Hephaestus won't go down quietly. Hephaestus is just a program that's lost its way. We are fighting for our survival. I can always call upon the goddess if you're nervous. Funny. How does everyone seem to you? Anxious, but ready. I heard Catalo ask for Alva's help with his pulse generator, and I know he's been helping her with a few fighting techniques, just in case. I hope they aren't needed. Like I said, just in case. That's a nice little bit of plot that, uh, like, Kotalo told us, oh, um, I'm not sure about this Alva person, and Aloy went earlier, you know, you remember, um, it was like ten minutes ago at most, um, <laughs> where, um, where Aloy went, oh, she's, she can handle herself, don't underestimate her. And Kotalo just went, okay, I take your work for it. And that's really what he does. He then went over and said, hey, you can help me with this nerd stuff. And hey, I can help you a little bit as well, maybe. Um, 
I like him. He's... Kotalo is this type of... You know, he knows his world, and that's basically it. And he's a warrior, and that's all he's ever learned to to value. Um, but, you know, he is into getting the job done. And so he says, you know, like, I'm, you know, he's, what is it called? The arrow that springs from the bow. He's kind of like, well, you know, I'm an arrow. You point me in the right direction and I make sure I hit the target. That's what I'm for. And if you tell me these other people have skills, then I will take advantage of those skills to make myself a better arrow for you, to make myself better in battle. And that, you know, that makes him impressive. He's not closed in his ways. He might not understand everything, but he... Um, he is good enough to take advantage of all resources at his disposal. Any last findings you want to share before leaving? Not really. Though I've reached a decision. Oh? When we put Gaia together, I want to return to the Nora, spread what I've learned. You think they'll listen to you? In time, I believe so. If anyone can make it happen, it's you, Varl. Varl is also cool. Like, they gave him a good role because he's... He takes the time to understand people. And that's kind of like Alo. I I called her impatient before, and I think that's a character trait of her. You know, she's used to people. You know, to being smarter than the people around her, and and being ignored. And so, Aloy will point him where his blade will cut the deepest. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what what Kotalo is. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so Aloy is used to being ignored and just goes, okay, I don't need other people in general, like, and has now slowly grown to realize, you know, that she has friends and that it's good to have them and that you can't do everything alone. And that's Varl and that's, oops, uh, that's Varl and that's Erend, um, and that's her new friends like Zo and Kotalo and what was ah uh, I forgot the name of the Quen uh, not Ava but something like that well her that we just saw in the background I mean Alva thank you <laughs> um yeah. And so, um, there is a lot, um, like, Aloy is slowly realizing how to deal with people, but she has the knowledge thing down pat. Whereas Varl, you know, grew up more among people, and he grew up in the capital of the tribe, which, you know, is a tiny village for our standards, but, like, in this world was almost overwhelming to Aloy. So he's used to having to navigate people and to having to understand people, and he's the son of their war chief, so he he probably had to do politics a little bit, you know, like he learned how to get along with people and how to find common ground. And that's what they have him using here. Um, so he, I think he, it's true, he is the right person to bring that knowledge to other people, because I don't think Aloy, Aloy considered that this might work, you know, she tried it a couple of times, nobody listened to her, done, but Varl 
has friends and can leverage, you know, his connections and has a reputation and has a name. And Aloy is still kind of the weird one that, yes, she's good in battle, but why would I listen to her about anything else, you know? And, and also, people think of her probably more as, you know, like a symbol, a legend, and less as a person. Whereas when Varl comes and tells someone about something, they react differently, you know, and maybe think about it a little bit. So, yeah, it, it totally makes sense that he might be able to pull that off where Aloy couldn't, both because he's more patient with people and, you know, feels his way into helping people. Whereas Aloy, she made friends just because basically she offered her services to them. She kind of goes like, yeah, okay, I'll save you. Yeah, yeah, Aloy has a statue near the spire and you just... You know, and Varl doesn't have that. But that statue can... that That's how they see her, you know? What will you and Zoe do if you go back to the Embrace? I hope she'll come with me. At least for a while. And I'll go with her to Plainsong, too. She'll probably want to talk to her people about all this as well. We'll figure it out. I know you will. I hope firing off those pulse generators will be enough to distract the Zeniths. It'll work. It has to. Always optimistic, huh? Nah, just stubborn. It's a good quality to have when dealing with you. <laughs> yeah, right. You were right, you know. About keeping Rost's memories buried. I guess part of me thought he was holding me back. Because he wanted me to be a Nora. But the truth is, he gave me a lot. And I took him for granted. He was a good man. He raised you well. I'm glad you're coming with me, Varl. You sure there's no urge to run off alone in there somewhere? No more running. I like that Rost is still present in the story. But in small doses, like, you know, he was a pivotal moment of the first game. And, you know, it was a big, it's a big thing to, like, oh. see your father die in front of you to save you. You know, like, that's, that screws up anyone. And so, um, Aloy going and doing that, uh, Aloy remembering that, you know, can be used for important things, like when she's talking to Beta. Um, so, but I like that they kind of didn't overdo it. Like, when you go into your room for the first time, it's mentioned, I think at the very start, we had a quick mention of it, just like as a recap of the previous game Wait. sort of situation. Go? <laughs> Wait, where did that file go? <laughs> um, but, you know, they didn't do too much with Ross. There was this moment, one moment where Aloy was knocked out, where she saw t thought she saw Ross for a moment, I think. Hey. We'll be going after Hephaestus soon. You good with the plan? I've already got the location of my assigned cauldron. Good. I heard you and Beta had a... talk. News travels fast. It wasn't exactly a quiet conversation. There were just things that needed to be said. A healthy crop to those who clear the weeds between them, as the Utaru say. <laughs> That's a nice metaphor. A healthy crop to so those that clear the weeds between them. So a YouTube video about a therapist that was examining the relationship between Rost and Aloy in the first game. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, was that uh, Georgia Dow? She does like a therapist reacts videos these days. She she did a podcast ages ago that I used to watch. So it's occasionally I go uh, and uh, watch her videos. I just stayed away from all the Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Forbidden West YouTube videos right now because I didn't want to get spoiled in any way. Um, and there's always like some casual spoiler, even in like the. Um, I remember back for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I like opened the YouTube front page and one video had like one pivotal moment as its thumbnail. Um, and so I was like, oh great, I'm about halfway into the game and I now know which person we'll be dealing with uh, uh, near the end somewhere. Um... So yeah, I'm I'm guessing it's probably Georgia's video. She she does great videos. I've I've seen her videos on other topics. I've avoided this one just to not be spoiled. You look like you have something on your mind. We're going to war soon. And war is something I promised myself I'd left behind in the Red Raids. But the more of your data I go through, every voice I hear. Every word I read from our ancient past, it makes me realize just how much life was given so that ours could flourish. Fighting for that gift, it's our responsibility. If we fail, it was all for naught. Helps to know you're not alone. For a moment there, you sounded like Varl. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Go. As soon as you intend to leave for Gemini, you'll hear about it. It's about Halo, Halo Grow. Nothing about this game. Yeah, I, I just you know I didn't want to risk it. There's so many videos where someone just mentions in one sentence. Oh yeah, and this is and like it is in Forbidden West. Also here in Horizon, it was already. And then, you know, you're already spoiled. So I just went, okay, I'm I'm placing a curtain of silence over there has to be more to this day. anything horizon until I finished the game. And then you know I'll be missing the game anyway, and will happily seek out all these videos and go like, okay, what do how did other people react to the game once they were done with it? Okay, you have a side quest for us, apparently. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. I was just studying the pulse generator schematics. The ones Gaia and Beta built. <laughs> the craftsmanship is remarkable. Is everything all right? It sounded like there was an uh, issue with Beta and the mission. Not anymore. We just needed to talk some things through. To understand one another is to embrace truth. Oh, and uh, if you have a moment, there's something I could use your help with. Have you spoken with Zoe at all? A little bit, but uh, I did hear her singing with Varl not too long ago. I don't think they noticed. Zoe seemed so... Uh, free when she did it like every emotion she had was taking flight in song uh, and she looked happier because of it uh, I felt so dull and nervous in comparison you should ask so to teach you sometime about Utaru music maybe I sadly have to wait till the game comes out on PC yeah yeah Last time it took, what, two years? So you'll have a bit of a wait ahead of you. Yeah. I basically... Horizon was one of the reasons I bought this PS4. Um, so... Yeah, the... That was my first console, by the way. Like, I... I wanted to play Horizon... Uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy, which, like few months ago came out for PC, so 
great. <laughs> Basically, the month I played it, or the month I finished it. Um, or so, um, it released for PC. Because I've, I've had it lying here and just didn't get to play through it. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and for uh, Spider-Man. And Spider-Man is basically the only game that's left now that hasn't been released for PC yet. And I'm not sure, I'm I'm wondering what will happen. Um, whether Sony will do the release of Spider-Man for PC or not. Because, I mean, this, this studio that did... Um, Horizon Zero Dawn is owned by Sony as well. So this is a Sony game that got released for PC. So it's not as if Sony goes, well, our own games stay on our console, but the others don't. But maybe it has to do with, you know, like for Spider-Man, they of course have to pay licensing fees to Disney. So... Uh, Maybe that's the reason why um, that hasn't released on PC yet. Because maybe it just, you know, financially, if they released it on PC, either they might need to get extra permission and pay more licensing to Disney, or maybe it's just that, you know, the extra amount they make by selling extra PC copies of Spider-Man, you know, might not be um, uh, big enough to justify the porting anymore after the license fees have been subtracted. You bought the first game at Chinese New Year. Okay, yeah, yeah, that... I guess it was on sale then. I don't remember. I think I might have the PC... Like, I bought the PC version of Horizon Zero Dawn just because, you know, I loved the game and I wanted to be able to go back someday and play it again. And since it came out for PC, that made sense. But I don't remember if I waited... if I waited for a sale or if I just bought it when it came out. If you need anything before heading out to the cauldrons... You have nothing to worry about. Gaia's explained your plan in detail, as expected from such an efficient AI. I've even received some very, um, uh, succinct combat advice from Kotalo. You know, uh, in case the Zeniths show up. What kind of advice? He, um, told me to run. <laughs> We'll even the odds soon enough. <laughs> she's she's great, like the the diplomatic way she says everything. She's so overly polite. And she goes, some very let's find something positive out about it. It was succinct. There was no doubt about what I should do. And I said, he said run. I mean, that makes sense. Like, Aloy didn't really manage to fight them. Like, she didn't have a weapon. We actually still don't have a weapon. Against them. Which is interesting. Although, we haven't tried Plasma yet. Any more data catch your eye? All of it? I have so much to study up on. Years, actually. I'm particularly interested in the Odyssey. We knew the ancestors had made it to the moon. In fact, we theorized some of them had settled on it. But Sirius is way farther than that. And we thought journeying across the ocean would be the feat of a lifetime. The sheer calculations needed for space travel. It's overwhelming to think about. Even so, the Quen are way ahead of other tribes when it comes to understanding this stuff. 
Where I grew up, everyone thought that stars were sparks that rose from a fire lit by the goddess to guide us through the night. Interesting. That's a bit of background that... Yeah, I guess Aloy learned that as a child from, a fo from the focus, what stars are. But maybe didn't actually have anyone to talk about that with. Huh. Must be strange to think that some of the ancestors your tribe reveres are still alive. And here on Earth, right now. Yeah, it is. Part of me is curious to know who else besides Eric Visser might be among them. Maybe Nikita Arand? We call her the Spark. The legacy tells us she brought unlimited energy to the Old Ones. Or Song Zhao, whom we call the Healer. It is said she found new ways to extend the ancestors' lifespans. But my curiosity fades when I think of how different our view of Visser was compared to the reality that you experienced. Perhaps it is better not to know. You mentioned there was something you needed help with? Yes. Uh, so, as I was sifting through data from the greenhouse, I found references to an old world system back in the Great Delta. It's called Leviathan. My people discovered it decades ago. A sprawling network of river gates and a labyrinth of underground tunnels. The legacy revealed that the old ones used it to control flooding. But we've never gotten it to work. The whole thing is shut down. But the data from the greenhouse mentions the research facility where Leviathan was created. It's in San Francisco. Another pharaoh facility? No. Leviathan was a project by Eileen Sasaki, another ancestor. So the legacy tells us, anyway. If we can acquire that data, we might be able to fix the system back in the Great Delta. Every year, my sister gets terrified when the long rains begin. With Leviathan, Maybe she won't have to be. Okay. So, where in San Francisco is this facility? That's the thing. The data doesn't say where, exactly. But one of our diviners has been exploring the ruins. He might know. Would you come with me? I have a feeling that wherever this facility is... Well, you're much better at fighting machines than I am. Of course. I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. Thank you, Aloy. I should go. Make sure you talk to Gaia if you have any questions about the pulse generators. May your path lead to truth. All right. And like I said, I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. We'll find the data you're after. I appreciate it. Okay, let's look what level that is. Forbidden Legacy 30. Okay. So these are all 30 quests that we can do before we go to Gemini. I'm kind of thinking that... Um, that I'll do that because Gemini sounds suspiciously like it's the final quest the final battle so I think I'm going to try to mop up everything I can before that at least until I get impatient and say hey I want to continue the story the matriarchs but... would cry if they read this about the old ones Kind of interesting. <laughs> oh, there's another memory apparently. Let's catch that on the way back out, I guess. But first, let's just make sure we're restocked on every resource. So much of who I am is because of Rost. Even now, he's still teaching me. 
And he'd probably scold me for taking so long to learn a lesson. <laughs> All this time I've been so focused on what Elizabeth was like, what she would do. I was wrong to hold Beta to that standard. I probably shouldn't even be doing it to myself. I'll try to do better. <laughs> That was kind of <laughs> ironic. <laughs> I shouldn't hold my high self to, to such high standards. I'll try to do better. Try to meet an even higher standard. All right, let's go to... Oh, do we have anything else? Should probably go down to beta just once more to see if she has something to say that stairs icon by the way irks me a little bit for the simple reason I'm, I'm sorry I have to just do the game design thing and it goes the wrong way it's a, a set of stairs that goes down so with left to right reading order the top part should be on the left and the bottom part on the right but it starts if you read it left to right at the bottom it goes up so when you see that symbol you go those are stairs leading up no wait i'm looking for stairs leading down until, of course, I realized that there was only one set of stairs here, so this was the icon for those stairs. Let's see if she has hey. anything else to say. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. I am. Is there something you wanted to talk about? So how goes studying up on the merge? Guy and I have added a function that will display a holographic interface to visualize the data stream from Hephaestus. It should make expunging its malicious code a little more efficient. That's great. Whatever we can do to cut down the merge time is going to increase our chance of success. Good work. I'll continue to search for other ways to speed up the process. But whenever you're ready, I am too. All of us joined us. Have you two had a chance to talk? She told me she's not allowed to access a lot of the data her people have. Similar to the restrictions I had in my training interface. I told her that if we succeed at Gemini, then once we return, I'll help her search for more ways to help her family. Even though Gaia will fix the biosphere, it'll take time for farmlands to fully recover. So, I want to help speed things up. How so? Bioengineering of more resilient plant strains, novel crop production methods, equipment upgrades, something that might help in the short term. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. And there is Beta. You know, that's kind of... That's the thing with people who are... Like, she seems very depressed basically she seems to think she's no good at anything and um then you hear her say things like that you know and you go like this is something aloy has no idea about that she could not do and you're just standing there and going yeah i could do that but i can't do what you are so i'm nothing you know and that's what you see here you know and you kind of want to go to her and, and, you know, like hug her and pick her up and shake her and say, did you realize what you just said? You are going to save the world. And you're making it sound like it's nothing much. So when you talk to the others, are you calling them over the focus? No, they'll come down here to visit. Like Erend. He's funny. But loud. 
I wish I could show him the media portal and the data channel. I think he would like the sports hollows. There was one where two people would criticize each other before wrestling to see who was stronger. It was bizarre and violent, but I think Aaron would enjoy it. Yeah, you're right. I bet he would. <laughs> Talk to you later, Beta. Bye, Aloy. Still seems kind of weird, kind of... You know, like, given it's very, 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 very likely a pun on Elizabeth that she's called Beta... You know, because Elisabetta is one form in some languages of Elizabeth. So calling her Beta is kind of a short form of her name. But of course, also, it kind of robs her of her humanity. First by, you know, just going like, oh, she's just a clone. And then Beta is, you know, the second letter of the alphabet. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah, she's like some second grade human even you know and so it feels kind of weird that uh, to have her keep that name you know under the knowing that it's a pun kind of makes it less weird and I don't know you know as far as the story goes none of them might actually know what beta really oh. means and that it has implications like that. All right. Chill air is prickling my lungs. Interesting that it's snowing now. Oops. I actually wanted to go here. Safe. All right. So Kotalo wants us here. Oh, that's an unknown shelter. So the furthest we can fast travel. Seems to be here. There's so much of the map we haven't really analyzed. Oh, and we still haven't gone back to the that bit of water. That we couldn't get into. Like, there was an underwater tunnel that seemed to contain some stuff. And since we didn't have the rebreather at the time was basically impossible to get into there. Ancient cars and buses may contain valuable loot. Okay, game. Certain damage states, like plasma, can only be cured with a cleansing potion, I guess. Um, okay, let's... Mark that shelter as well. Oh. Seems like there are... Oops. Hunter killer machine. More deadly than the normal one. I'm not here. You can't see me.
guess we'll just run. Pretend we've seen the zenith. Given the way they transported Beta, I doubt that she has any special powers or equipment. Her clothes also look very, very simple. Whoops. I guess we should have already unlocked that, but... Uh You can get a strong color out of this. Come on. We can probably... Okay, it doesn't seem as if there's any way to climb up here. But here, that should work. Come on. Um, hello, game? Nope. That was the wrong one. But, uh... Ah, uh, finally. Okay. I guess let's do a quick save here. Just to be sure. And then go back over... with lots of stars. So now I'm thinking technically I would have time to play longer. Oof. a little tiny settlement apparently but on the other hand we've been streaming for four hours now so uh, I'm not sure wait did I miss the turn okay I kind of wish the pathfinding was a little more obvious about this is an intermediate point and this is the final destination. So you kind of know what to expect. Bleeding Mark. Is that the one that was underwater? Come on. Or is that a different one? Yes, you say yes, this is the one that was underwater that we changed, okay. It seems like... Oh, is this... Oh yeah, there's the machine we... Yeah, there's the crane we turned so the people could leave and things, yeah. I guess we never got, went to check out how it looked up here. That it's really cool. This is a uh, you know pretty realistic depiction of what happens when you have rainstorms and and ground gets eroded and things like that. 
with all the bits of tree lying around and all that. You know, it's not like if that happens in your neighborhood, it's not a pretty thing, really. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it has the same prettiness as anything destroyed by a natural catastrophe. Um, so it has this, this frightening beauty, of course, and, uh, makes you have respect, but, um, that said, um, you know, it's a faithful uh, reproduction. And it's cool that they went all the way to model all of that and didn't just go, well, by the time you see it, it's resolved anyway. So I'm still deciding if I will actually try to play the mission today, but I'll at least go to the mission start and maybe have a talk with Kotalo there. Maybe, uh, I think probably the best idea would just be to take a little break and then come back. So, um... So, you know, like a five minutes or something. So, let's go up there. And then have a quick... A quick five minute break and then we can go back. Because I'm really curious about this story and, and how, how it turns out. E you remember, I've, I've talked about this on previous streams, that like... I like that Kotalo is allowed to, you know, just have one arm and still be capable. The research lab's right up that cliff. Kotalo said that's where we'll find the parts to build him a new arm. I should let him know I'm here. All right. So this is where we'll take our break and then we'll continue with that quest. Um, you already know what's coming up now, because Aloy just gave us a beautiful summary of why we are here. Why Kotalo wants us to come here. So, uh, see you in about, uh, five minutes. Here it's really hard in these mountains to find actual actual leap of faith spots that won't kill you. I guess here that should work because there's water, just in case. Let's quick save. And let's try that. Yeah, it is a leap of faith spot. Thank goodness. Okay. It's a very cold spot, but uh, it won't immediately kill you, which I guess is good. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. And you are? Joaquin Jacinto de Mera Alfonso de Oro, treasure hunter extraordinaire. What were you doing down there? Nothing. It looked like you were playing with dolls. <laughs> They're not dolls. They're fully articulated porcelain power pirates. Fully articulated porcelain power pirates. Okay. Um. Anyway, what would be wrong with dolls, please, sir? Guybrush? Your daughter hungry? I have bread. We're no fools. What do you want in return? Nothing. I have a little girl of my own at home. Same age. 
Give it here then, and quick about it. Can't have anyone seen me hobnobbing with a Briton. <laughs> nice. Hobnobbing with a Briton. Um. I guess calling back to the per person who contracted us to find Ethan will be a long distance charge. Very, very long distance. To get to the other side. To the other side. Blimey, it's so amazing. Amazing grace. How blessed the Lord who saved a wretch like me. Oh, something, something do be do. Was blind, but now I see. There is this rope thingy. Maybe we can slide down there and drop. I mean, technically, it's probably possible in game. The question is, can I pull it off? Oh, the music is nice. Worked. And there's a chest to loot. Even some food to heal me from the fall damage. That's nice. Now we just have to figure out how to get down here again. Um, I see a little problem with my plan. Um, <laughs> okay. Errors are red. Screens are blue. I must have deleted system 32. What I can also do is I can say, hey, let's call idle in here. So even when I move it around, it will be spinning. And, you know, you could imagine, you could make a game like this. You can... I just miss the music. Do, 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 and now we need to generate only artwork. But in the case of silly balls, for example, which is in artwork, its path is data, test data, artwork, silly balls. Um, never thought I'd see, see. Oh, you must try my ale sometime. You must. My abbey brews the best in Kent. It certainly sounds worth the risk of my immortal soul. It's <laughs> rather a hard task, Master. And your god forbids the mixing of wool and linen. It sounds to me like he's never heard of England. <laughs> Not all that is written in the scriptures is God's honest truth. I do a roaring trade at record.